So my name is uh, Brittany Chantel. I am a hip hop artist and um, speaker, visual artist. The name of the production that I did was A Fire on Venus, which is the name of my recent hip hop album that uh, encompasses many different aspects of queer love. Um, we, I worked with Remy Vega and Treble NLS on the production of the album, and Remy Vega also played keys in the production here. Um, I also worked with Kaylin Horgan as the choreographer um, and dancer, and um, yeah, it's pretty great. So, this CSA performance at the New Hazlet Theater is different than what I've done at the pa in the past because, I mean, I'm playing on small stages whenever. I'm performing live um, or just, you know, non-theater stages, I guess I, guess I should say. Um, you know, there isn't, there isn't a lighting designer at the normal events that I play at. Um, you know, we don't usually have as much stage space for dancers to, to dance around or um, even for me to be included in the choreography. So it allows for way more space for us to incorporate different elements into the into the performance and kind of tell the story of a fire on Venus way more clear and favorite number and I put me above expectations no explaining pedestals and gender roles look at my soul look at my future I know you see my crystal ball first date I showed you I ain't holding no information if you want to know come meet me in the middle of the my eyes blinded I'm not finding equal distance between me you and kinda are you trying no need in buying material things I just need to feel more things from you can you meet me halfway can you meet me halfway? 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 Face on six, trouble on two, the fade in the balance in the middle like you. Fade in the balance in the middle like you. Fade in the balance in the middle like you. Face on six, trouble on two, the fade in the balance in the middle like you. Fade in the balance in the middle like you. some of the the biggest risks that I took in this performance were doing a lot of like firsts like I had a lot of like first time for this first time for that um, I went ahead and invested in in your monitors and was just like yeah if I'm gonna be doing this professionally like I need to get some in-ear monitors um, and that was my first time performing with them um, it was my first time performing without a handheld mic so that was like a pretty big change in the way that I perform. Um, it, allowed, it freed up my hand space, so I had to do, I had to figure out what I'm gonna do with my hands. How can I convey the emotion of the, the songs and the lyrics with my hands um, or with my body better? 
Um, cause I feel like holding on to that, the handheld mic is like, you know, kind of a, a placekeeper or of such, you know? So, um, you know, in a sense, that was a risk doing that for the first time. Um, also, being more incorporated in the choreography, um, you know, it's like, it's pretty difficult to sing and dance at the same time. I don't know how a lot of people do it. <laughs> but, you know, like a risk, uh, it's something that I didn't necessarily, um, I mean, we, we rehearsed but it wasn't something that I thought about, you know, how difficult it was going to be. So I think that that's a risk that we took, so. I think the most rewarding part of the CSA experience is the fact that I have so much more knowledge than what I had whenever, you know, before. Um, and, like, I have now a full-scale production, like, in my hands. Like, I can take that and take it to another city, take it to another theater, which would be great, and that's, you know, what the plans are. Um, and, you know, without this experience, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to work with a lighting designer, to work with a stage director. Like, I didn't know that all of these things existed almost. It's like, how can you take, um, how can you take advantage of opportunities that you don't know exist? Working with the CSA design pool has also, has me thinking kind of far out ahead when I'm recording now. So I'm working on my second album right now. And um, I'm thinking about, um, the different lighting effects that I might want on a song um, combined with some sound effects that we might put on the track. Um, you know, this next album is gonna be um, primarily centered around, you know, a whole different topic than A Fire on Venus. It's gonna be centered around my military experience. So if we're going to put, for instance, you know, some type of um, gunfire in the background, what kind of, um, 
you know, lighting do I want paired with that? So I'm thinking ahead um, when it comes to those things. And now I know what those types of designers need from me too. So it's, it's helpful to be able to go through this experience and kind of like learn as I go. Um, because now I know what a costume designer needs from me it, as, you know, they ask me these questions like, what do you see? What do you visualize? And I have already been thinking about that for months. So, um, same thing with a lighting designer of like, you know, what kind of mood is this? What kind of, what are you trying to portray? I can answer those questions a lot easier because I'm already thinking about them before the album's even done.
know I look deep. It ain't my fault. I sow what I reap. You get what you earn, but it ain't for keeps. So where do I go? The lessons I'll use this Pain like a fibromyalgia No medication can move this I gotta change up my views To wonderful cues I'm tired of sis. I gotta change up my views But that's what my views is Rational thinking can get you confused These black and white checkers Just tell you the move And check your pieces Don't mean that you lose But this sounds so much more forward than rude More like solutions and less like a cue I was just checking if you were my main And if you are
your sketchiness All my friends saying maybe you can't handle this Thinking this is you oblivious Well baby I'm on a mission I'm responsible for the energy on me now I know my real people I'm in my full house and this ain't the sequel you say I need patience to handle your issues but I'm in my basement with patience to get to you don't need labels you don't want titles so when you see glow ups please don't feel entitled your past ain't me now your future ain't she now your present ain't me but that's okay for me now go check you like I did I almost break that's windows to true self. Cry yourself a river and get over yourself. I'm no savage, just honest and honestly. I know what I want. Cry yourself a river and get over yourself. I'm no savage, just honest and honestly. It took me some years now to know what I need. Not including you. On me. I am quick to cancel. Why keep making plans when you show your toxins well in advance? I'm not here to fix you and all of your issues. Find someone who gets you. A doctor might fit you. I'm working hard to fix all of my trauma, so I need somebody who works on their shit too. I ain't no angel. I know I'm not perfect, but your extra bullshit don't feel like it's worth it. I'm trying to give you but you seem too blinded to see past the surface. Cry yourself a river and get over yourself. I'm no savage, just honest and honestly. I know what I want. Cry yourself a river and get over yourself. I'm no savage, just honest and honestly. The feelings ain't showing. It's out of my hands. Force the subject when I stand where I stand.
excessive font. You'll give me all that I want. I was just seeking an apology. You turned his back, put the shit right on to me, saying I made the mistake. Gaslighting, thankfully I can see.
course, I had some people who, you know, know my music full and through, friends, family, um, just general fans throughout Pittsburgh, you know, come to the show. And, you know, them kind of knowing what to expect and whatnot. And then there's, um, you know, like the CSA subscribers that they come to every single show. Um, you know, I, I can only imagine that this has expanded, like, my fan base. Um, my connection with those people are now, like, kind of, it's showing other people who may not have been in the hip-hop community or the hip-hop circle going to hip-hop shows what hip-hop can look like. Like, it's not just this cookie cutter, you know, one way of sounding, one way of looking. Like, it can look many different ways, and this is one way that it can look like. So um, I'd like to think that I expanded, like, my relationship and with the Pittsburgh community and specifically kind of, like, dove into the Pittsburgh theater community and hopefully can attract more fans from the theater community because it's important to me. I mean, honestly, this is, like a very, I don't want to be cliche, but once in a lifetime opportunity, um, especially in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, the conversation around venues, venue space, accessible venues, uh, that conversation continues, especially throughout the hip hop community. Um, and this process, like I said, has laid the framework for me to pick this show up and do it somewhere else and do it just as good, if not better. So, um, you know, for artists who are trying to fine tune their craft, to try and reach a broader art audience, to try and like show people what they can do if they're provided certain uh, materials and money and space, what they can do. Cause like often, that, oftentimes that's the issue. Um, with being a local artist in Pittsburgh. It's like, I don't have the money. I don't have the people. I don't know a costume designer. I don't know a lighting designer. Um, and the New Hazlet Theater does a really good job of bringing all of these different um, people together and saying, hey, here's the people that can make your show happen or make your vision happen and uh, will help you. I think um, the role of an artist in our society is to tell their story with just pure honesty and non like non apologetic, you know, like don't be, don't apologize for your story, um, which is something that like I've had to work on and I'm still working on it. Um, to not think twice about who wants to listen to your story and if your story is important to listen to, um, to just tell it. And I know it's sometimes easier said than done, um, taking that role as an artist. Um, but we're so, human beings are so dynamic and we're all going through so many different things from childhood to adulthood. And it's like, these are important stories to tell. Um, you never know who can relate to your things, to your work. You never know who you're helping. Um, I've been surprised by how many people come up to me and they tell me that they got out of an abusive relationship because they listened to A Fire on Venus. That wasn't even my aim with the project. So. Telling your story matters, and I think that the sole role of your, of your artistry is to tell your story and to just be pure about it. I think, I think that's a heavy question, but it can like go in so many different ways. But um, I think um, for people to support artists, I think the best thing for people to do is to have an open mind because Art can look so many different ways. And you can tell that by just visiting some of the museums that we have here in Pittsburgh um, and how different each one is. So approaching um, people's work with an open mind and, and that being non-judgmental and um, asking questions before assuming things. And I definitely always believe that people should um, interpret art the way they would like but just approach it with an open mind. And I think that more than anything supports artists. Um, you know, I can say like, you know, buy people's merch, buy people's music, um, buy tickets and so on and so forth. But those are like all things that I think are just well known, like that supports artists, like putting money in their pocket, um, ticket sales, you know, like all the, all those things support artists, but, um, I feel most supported when people approach my art with an open mind and non-judgmental.